Okay. So, in a lot of studios or, uh, or facilities, you'll have uh, people creating materials and uh, do it, doing look dev work and lighting sort of as one. And in, our, in our other studios, there'll be very different roles. We shader people, working with look dev, setup people, texture people, lighting people, all very different departments. And this is where look dev, uh, look files in Katana are very powerful because it just gives you another tool to help with collaboration. And I love smart collaboration tools. Um, so here's how a look file works. It was a little bit mysterious to me when I first started learning it, so I'll do my best at explaining it. So what we can do is use a look file later in the pipeline to bring in a mesh or an asset, bring in an asset, drop a look file on it, and straight away it looks like this without having any other nodes in the scene other than a look file assigned. You notice there's lots of look file nodes so you can tell they're, they're to be used a lot in Katana. But the most, po most common ones are the look file bake, which create the look files, and a look file assign. And then there's other ways to you know, manage multiple look files and all sorts of other stuff. But the main two um, we'll be looking at in these videos are just the simple ones to give you the quick overview. Uh, so the look file bake and look file assign. So what we do with a look file, how we create one, is we sort of bracket the node graph. So what I've done here, you'll see this merge node. I'm feeding in all the materials into one merge node, out this dot, and into this merge. So what we're, uh, what we're doing with the look file bake, this node here, is it's got two inputs, original and default. And what that means is original is a point in the graph, i.e. here, which it considers the original part in the node graph. And then it has the default input, which is this one here. And then we have the option to put a path in here. I've already put in chameleon based materials. Um, but I can hit a right look file, and that store out a file happens instantly almost. Uh, and what that does is it compares the, the node graph from here to here and it stores the difference. So it stores whatever's happening in between. So it's not just for materials this I'll point out at this point. We could put anything in here. We could have uh, different, uh, different settings for uh, object settings, for subdivision. We could put render settings in here. You could put all sorts of stuff. but. This area of my template is specifically um, for storing materials, that's why I've named it like this, and that's why I'm feeding in the materials at this point in the graph. Um, and I'm also assigning it in here as well. So if someone was to get that look file that I just saved and plug it into a graph somewhere else, what will happen is all these materials will get created semi-silently in the background. Um, and they will also be assigned to the meshes in a single node, all of that will happen. So I can save out that look dev work as an iteration perhaps. So this would be like chameleon based materials V1. Then the lighting artist can start working on the scene and start lighting it while I'm continuing to work on a V2. And I can, uh, I can iterate and, let, and uh, use that look dev material for different purposes. You'll notice in my look dev template here as well, I've got the same setup again with an original input here and a default input here. And that just stores any lighting that I might put in the scene. So one of the next sections I want to do is uh, bringing in that look file that we've created and applying it to the scene. And then creating some look files for lighting as well. So that's what I want to try next.